so unfair because it's not just Israel being attacked, it's what people are missing. For example, small thing, there was this massive earthquake yesterday in uh, Turkey and in Syria. I have not heard the word Kurd mentioned once. Most of the victims are Kurds. This is a Kurdish region of Turkey and northern Syria. And you know why a lot of those buildings collapsed? Because I speak to lots of Kurds. I spoke this afternoon to one of my Kurdish friends. She said, that the Turkish Erdogan government has what's called an earthquake tax in that region. It taxes people in order to, it's meant to solidify buildings to make them stronger. It spent nothing on that at all. So what I'm trying to say is that yesterday when the earthquake happened, BBC radio that I was listening to on the internet immediately said, the tremors were also felt in Gaza. Is everything okay in Gaza? Even though Gaza was very far away from the epicenter and, and there was no problems in Gaza. But they, what they don't say is this much bigger group of minority group, the Kurds, 35 million people, they get it again and again. I'd also say this, if there was an ever an independent Kurdistan, it's far more likely to be democratic and to respect women's rights and so on than an independent Palestinian state would be. And it's far more likely Kurdistan to be an ally of the West. In spite of that, there is not there is almost no interest from the big uh, human rights um, groups like Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch, because I'm going to say something a little bit controversial here. There is actually partly a kind of progressive anti-Semitic wing to them, but there's also a very far left Jewish wing who are kind of racked by guilt by the idea that Israel is not absolutely perfect. And people like Ken Roth, who stood down recently as head of Human Rights Watch and now went to Harvard, he's pulling his hair out to criticize Israel because Israel isn't how he wants it to be, which is some kind of fairy land, non-existent, perfect country of which there's never been such a country anywhere on earth ever and never will be. So they have a kind of almost personalized agenda people like Ken Roth, to push Israel into some kind of utopia. Um, so I think some of the problem is that a lot of the kind of activists are actually themselves anti-Zionist or very left-wing Zionist Jews who are pushing Israel. Same with the New York Times. I think increasingly other groups, and you know, I've been to lots of human rights conferences, and other groups I meet from North Korea and Burma, Myanmar and various African countries, they don't care less about the Palestinians. Most of the Arabs I meet, the Arab human rights activists from Bahrain and Yemen and so on, they also, they're so sick of the West and the media highlighting every little thing that happens in the West Bank and totally ignoring what's happening in Yemen or many, many other conflicts. You look at the Uyghurs in China, Rohingya, Muslims, 800,000 living in terrible conditions. Um, you know, I'll give you a small example that I only discovered last week. Somalia, one of the reasons Somalis in America do not like Ilan Omar is that her father, a colonel, was part of the previous ruling military uh, regime that carried out a genocide on a minority, I'm afraid I can't remember their name now, 200,000 people died in, in, in Somalia. I never even heard of that minority, 200,000 deaths. Or Ethiopia, half a million people have, killed, have been killed in the Ethiopian war in the last two years. It's the most deadly conflict on earth. And in America, the media say black lives matter, but apparently they don't matter to liberal media in America. If they did, they would cover the Ethiopian war. It's all fooey. That's, that's couldn't be a better point. That's exactly right. 